So, today, uh, me and George are going to show you how to correctly fit a martingale collar. Um, I've sort of, uh, in my time working with hounds, I've come across people who are a little bit nervous about using martingale collars after their dogs have slipped out of them. And I think when um, when putting them on, there's particular things that you need to pay attention to to make sure that they're correctly fitted. Because when they are correctly fitted and they're good quality, the the dog really does have minimal ability to be able to back out of them and escape. Um, that's sort of the whole idea behind them. So I'll sort of break it down here as to what the what all the parts are. So you've obviously got the main part. Um, the main bit of fabric that has the adjustment slider on it to make it bigger and smaller and then you've got this loop of fabric here now in some you know it sort of looks different in some collars but this is generally the most common type um, that, that we that I sort of see um, so this is the loop of fabric here that basically applies and releases the pressure so the key thing to take away is that when you are adjusting a martingale collar to fit to a dog these two points, these two metal points here, shouldn't be able to touch when it's on the dog's, when it's sort of on the narrowest point of the dog's neck, which is obviously right up by his ears. So I'll show you what I mean. When you put it on, when it comes right up to his neck, see how they can touch. If he really tried, I mean his, his head's pretty big, but on a smaller dog like Millie, <coughs> You know, if, if the these two little bits here clasp together, Millie can still back out of that. And and people sort of like to put it right down on the bottom of the dog's neck, and that's fine around the house. But when you're actually out walking, you really want to have it done up securely so that if the dog does get spooked by something like a bus or a rubbish truck or someone on a skateboard or um, they want to try and chase a cat, <clears throat> so you know like in those situations you don't really want them to be able to back out obviously and bugger off um, so this is sort of how it should be this is right up nice and tight behind his, the back of his sort of head and just behind his ears you can see here it's not choking him out I can still get two fingers in it and there's still a bit of a sort of a gap in there but what you'll see is that when this when this loop of fabric here applies pressure it closes the whole loop like there's no um, there's no way, like once you've got the tiniest bit of pressure on that, there's no way for him to back out of that. He can't, you know, like he, he, he couldn't slide backwards out of it because of the pressure that's put on. And then once you release the pressure, it just goes back to normal and he's all good. So it is actually really important when you buy a martingale collar to make sure that the adjustment range on it is enough to sort of fit your dog. Um, most of them are all pretty um, uniform but I have had a couple of times where Millie's quite a little dog being only sort of about 25 kilos where I might have got a collar that is actually ends up being too big for her and I can't adjust it down small enough. Um, so it's just something to be conscious of to make sure that your collars all fit correctly. So when I am uh, buying a martingale collar, I tend to look for things that are um, easy to adjust. Um, so these ones here, in, I actually got these ones here in particular made by an outfit called Bow Wow Boutique, who are local. Um, and these ones here, they are really good quality. They're all really good quality metal hardware. Um, the because of how they um, they don't have a, an extra layer of like jazzy fabric on them to make them look too pretty. They're, I mean, these ones are really just functional collars for work. Um, but because they don't have that, they're really easy to adjust. Um, so there's really no excuse for not fitting them properly. Um, the stitching on them is all really, really good quality. Um, so I really like that. The stuff that I tend to avoid is um, is anything that has um, sort of plastic slides or adjusters or D-rings or anything like that. But, um, really with a big powerful dog anything that's plastic like that um, is going to be your first point of failure. Um, and, and often when things like that fail the results are catastrophic. In summary, go and check your dog's collars. Um, check the stitching on them. Check that the hardware is in good nick, isn't bent. Check all the stitching on the material, and most importantly, check that they fit correctly. This feels like a pre-flight instructional video. And um, if you've got any other questions about martingales, um, how to fit them, where to buy them, how to use them, 
happy to answer, fire away. See you next time.